Okay, so this is great. We're building up a list of all of the major components involved in middleware oriented messaging. So let's just take a look. We have already talked about messages. So a message is going to look something like this. We know about them. We have also discussed something called a queue, which is often drawn like this, where you put messages inside this queue and the queue sort of starts filling up. That is a queue. And then separately, we have something called the queue manager. And we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. But a queue manager, sort of drawn like this, and inside the queue manager, you will find, probably not too surprisingly, uh, queues, a bunch of queues potentially like this, that will all build up you know, messages inside the queue. And then you also have something called a channel, we've already looked at that, which connects the different queues, and really the queue managers, between each other. Now you also have something called an application, and this is uh, no surprise. It's sort of a typical uh, executable, executable, a binary program on your computer. It'd be something like you know program.exe in the case of Windows. But these are really uh, these are actually applications, right? So the applications we're going to see how these all fit together in a second. So these are the basic core components of middleware. Uh, the way we're going to be using it with MQ. Now let's take a look at this in more detail. So again, here we have our message. Here we have a queue. And then here are the applications, the messages, the message queues, and the managers along with the channels. So the question here is, hmm, how does this all fit together? And take a look, the queue is like drawn like this here in this uh, image, the queue manager, which is down here, will maintain all of the queues, like we said, of all the messages that are waiting to be processed or routed. And then you have some sort of application here that will put a message. So it's going to take you know this message of some kind. It's going to put it uh, on a channel, right? You can see that drawn here. And that will go to a specific queue. The queue, though, notice how the queues are all drawn on top of the queue manager. And that's because you cannot have a queue without having a queue manager. The queues exist on the queue manager. And there are times when, this is actually fairly common, that in order to get one queue manager, this queue manager might be on a single VM, and this queue manager might be on another VM. And how do you get messages to be routed from one VM to another VM? Well, you do that over a channel as well. The message will go be put on the queue, it'll be transferred across the channel. And that usually happens on a networking medium, TCP IP in like 99% of the cases. And it goes over to this other queue manager. But it really, the message itself doesn't really know much about queue managers at all. It only knows about queues. And the messaging system will try to figure out which queue manager to route the message to based on the names of the queue and based on the contents of the message. And then once it gets over here, it'll then be transferred off to this application. And that application you can see is running, in this case, probably on some sort of large system. Notice that there is something called a client, we're going to talk about that soon, that does not contain a queue manager or by extension any queues. Clients will just connect over to servers. So that, that's an important thing. A You can, can think of the queue manager as a server and that there is a separate thing called a client and the client looks like this a client is a lightweight component of the websphere mq that does not require the queue manager runtime code to reside on the client system it enables an application running on a machine where only the client code runtime code is installed to connect to a queue manager that is running on another machine and perform messaging operations. Okay, so what does that sort of look like? Well, it's fairly straightforward. It's going to look uh, like this. So imagine you have your, your application. It's running here, I'm just gonna make an A. And it does not, and then you wanna connect over to our Q over here. Uh, well, actually, let's draw it like this. There's our Q, and of course, that's running on some sort of Q manager. and. How do you get the two to talk to each other? Well, imagine this is some sort of, uh, this application is is not got a queue manager running on it. So the, the QM system is, you know, it's not here. And if that queue management software is not here, there's how does it know anything about queues at all? I mean, it's just some application, it's some, some uh, it's just some executable binary program. Well, what you do is you install a library and we're going to talk about what which library that is. But basically it's running a, it's running a library of code that has enough code in it to talk to the queue manager. 
And that means that this whole thing here is called a client. And the queue manager is now considered a server. So now we had talked earlier about in tier. This is an uh, this is not quite an in tier system, but you could imagine it being sort of that way. It's essentially again where n equals two, and you have a client server setup. But the important thing is that the the queue manager is sort of considered a server in this arrangement, and the application here is considered a client. And here's just a quick representation of how you might see this drawn out in the wild.